Okay, we are live. Okay, we're going to give this a try again. Uh, sorry about before. Uh, if you're not uh, streaming with us live, that's okay. Uh, it will be uploaded as a standalone video. Uh, still shaking out the uh, kinks in this. I have never done any kind of streaming before or video work really for that matter. So kind of a compressed learning curve these days with uh, all the churches going to uh, online services. The people who have done it before have a real leg up on us other folks. Okay, let's try this again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O Lord, how many are my foes, many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people. had someone tell me that it's uh, too quiet so we're gonna try that how's that Ed can you hear me I know you're watching it maybe should be a little better getting a message that my bit rate is too low. Uh, not much I'm going to do with that right now because I don't know where all the controls for this stuff is. Uh, but uh, if it's a little laggy, it's okay. You really don't need to see me clearly. Clearly, nobody wants to see that. Uh, but as long as you can hear me, that is the important thing. Okay, so we continue with a reading from Genesis chapter 42. When Jacob learned that there was grain for sale in Egypt, okay, they're saying it's still too quiet. Try one more thing. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Wow, that is kind of quiet. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, how's that? Better? Better? Yes? Okay. Hopefully once we get all these settings nailed down, uh, I won't have to interrupt the service uh, commenting on how bad the tech stuff is. 
Okay, a reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 42. When Jacob learned that there was grain for sale in Egypt, he said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is grain for sale in Egypt. Go down and buy grain for us there that we may live and not die. So ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Benjamin, Joseph's brother, with his brothers, for he feared that harm might happen to him. Thus the sons of Israel came to buy among the others who came for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over the land. He was the one who sold to all the people of the land, and Joseph's brothers came and bowed themselves before him with their faces to the ground. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized him, but he treated them like strangers and spoke roughly to them. Where do you come from, he said. They said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. And Joseph remembered the dreams that he had dreamed of them, and he said to them, you are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. They said to him, No, my lord, your servants have come to buy food. We are all sons of one man. We are honest men. Your servants have never been spies. He said to them, No, it's the nakedness of the land that you have come to see. And they said, We, your servants, are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, It is as I said to you, you are spies. By this you will be tested. By the life of Pharaoh you shall not go from this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you, and let him bring your brother while you remain confined, that your words may be tested, whether there is truth in you. Or else, by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. And he put them all together in custody for three days. On the third day, Joseph said to them, Do this, and you will live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers remain confined where you are in custody, and let the rest go, and carry grain for the famine of your households, and bring your youngest brother to me, so your words will be verified, and you shall not die. And they did so. Then they said to one another, In truth, we are guilty concerning our brother, and that we saw the distress of his soul when he begged us, and we did not listen. That is why this distress has come upon us. And Reuben answered them, Did I not tell you not to sin against the boy? But you did not listen. So now there comes a reckoning for his blood. They did not know that Joseph understood them, for there was an interpreter between them. Then he turned away from them and wept. And he returned to them and spoke to them, and he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. And Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with grain and to replace every man's money in his sack, and to give them provisions for the journey. This was done for them. Then they loaded their donkeys and their grain and departed. And as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey fodder at the lodging place, he saw money in the mouth of his sack. He said to his brothers, My money has been put back. Here it is in the mouth of my sack. At this their hearts failed them. And they turned trembling to one another, saying, What is this that God has done to us? When they came to Jacob their father in the land of Canaan, they told him all that had happened to them, saying, The man, the lord of the land, spoke roughly to us, and took us to be spies of the land. But we said to him, We are honest men, we have never been spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more, and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the lord of the land, said to us, by this I shall know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers with me, and take grain for the famine of your households, and go on your way. Bring your youngest brother to me. Then I shall know that you are not spies, but honest men, and I will deliver your brother to you, and you shall trade in the land. But he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is the only one left. If harm should happen to him on the journey that you are to make, you would bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to Shoal. This is the word of the Lord. A writing from one of the church fathers, John Bunyan. I find to this day seven abominations in my heart. One, an inclination to unbelief. Two, suddenly forgetting the love and mercy that Christ shows us. Three, a leaning to the works of the law. 
4. Wanderings and coldness in prayer. 5. Forgetting to watch for that which I have prayed for. 6. A tendency to murmur because I have no more, and yet a willingness to abuse what I have. 7. I can do none of those things which God commands me, but my corruptions will thrust themselves upon me, so that when I would do good, evil is present with me. These things I continually see and feel and am afflicted and oppressed with. Yet the wisdom of God orders them for my good. 1. They make me abhor myself. 2. They keep me from trusting my heart. 3. They convince me of the insufficiency of all inherent righteousness. 4. They show me the necessity of flying to Jesus. 5. They press me to pray to God. 6. They show me the need I have to watch and be sober. 7. And they provoke me to look to God through Christ to help me and carry me through this world. Amen. We confess together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Monday prayers are for ourselves, for others, for our calling and our daily work, for the unemployed, for the salvation and well-being of our neighbors, and for all of our schools, colleges, and seminaries. O Lord, merciful and holy bridegroom, we grieve for the fall of your church. It is our fault that the beauty of your bride is no longer recognized. Therefore, we pray you give and increase us in faith, love, and hope in you. Root out of us all sins and vice, all strife, all disbelief, all error and heresy. Rebuke the erring, convert the unbelievers. Bring the rebellious again to the unity of the Christian church and show them the light of your truth. Protect our shepherd from all danger of body and soul. Bless all pastors and those who administer in the church in the building of your congregation. Grant them success in all things. Equip your whole church with the power and proof of the holy faith. Stand by your witnesses among the nations and further the course of your gospel in all the world. Fill all government with the fear of you and let their ruling serve to foster and preserve peace. Have mercy on our people and country. Let the youth be brought up in discipline and in a right knowledge of you, so that they may recognize your law and the way of your salvation. Give constancy and loyalty to all pious teachers. Comfort all the troubled and sorrowful. Impart health of body and soul to the sick. Grant to all pregnant women according to your mercy a happy result in their childbearing. To the needy give bodily and spiritually according to your good pleasure. Let those who travel be commended to the protection of your holy angels and be a strong help to all who need you. For the sake of your holy wounds, O Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join together in Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. 
For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. God bless your day.